Well, today I'm going to be making more shelves, but these shelves will be a little bit different from the last shelves. Uh, on the last shelves, I was able to clean up the end grain on the plywood simply by gluing a veneer to the end grain and then sanding it down, and that makes for a nice look. But for these shelves, I want a thicker edge. It's just a, a nicer look in a bookcase to have, well, it's going to be an inch and a half wide, the edge banding that I'm going to use, uh, as opposed to just a three-quarter inch shelf. It'll look kind of thin in a bookcase. So what I'm going to do is rip a few pieces of poplar down to an inch and a half and nail it and glue it to the front of the shelf and the back. And not only will that look better in the bookcase, but it will help to strengthen the shelf and keep the shelf from sagging under the weight of anything being displayed in the bookcase. The first thing I'm going to do is cross cut my shelves to length with the table saw. I've cross cut my shelves to length. And I should mention that the inside of the cabinet is 32 and 3 quarters, so I cross cut the shelf at 32 and 11 sixteenths, just keeping the shelf a sixteenth of an inch light. Now I'm going to rip the shelves, and I want an overall measurement of 11 inches. So I'm going to rip my shelves at 9 and a half because I'm adding 3 quarters of an inch to the front of the shelf and 3 quarters of an inch to the back. Now that I've finished cutting my shelves to length and width, the next step is to rip strips of poplar at an inch and a half. I finished ripping all of my poplar on the table saw and I ran it through my drum sander also to remove any of the blade marks that you get. Now I know a lot of people aren't going to have a, a drum sander like that so what you can do is you can buy your material at a lumber yard or a home store and buy it as one by two and that will measure exactly three quarters of an inch by an inch and a half and it will be S4S which stands for sand and surface on four sides. So now that I've got all of my material cut to width and I've rough cut it to length, I'm going to set up a stop block on my chop saw and cut everything to the exact length. With all of my parts cut, I can now assemble the shelves and I'm gonna use a little wood glue and inch and a half long nails in my nail gun. I want to make sure that my shelves and my edge banding are flush. It's a good idea to remove any excess wood glue with a damp rag before it sets up. Okay, well that's my last shelf. But, um, you know, as I was building the shelf, I realized that when I was talking about the one by two actually being three quarters by an inch and a half, I realized that could be a little confusing. So I'm gonna bring the camera closer and try to explain as clearly as I can uh, a little bit about lumber and how it's sold. So when you go to the lumber yard, it's not quite as confusing. I've got two boards here to help me explain what I'm talking about. Now this board would be referred to as a one by two, but if we measure it, we can see it only measures three quarters of an inch by an inch and a half. And this board over here would be referred to as a one by six. And again, 
it only measures three quarters of an inch by five and a half. And that's because the lumber yard is describing the material before it's milled. Now, each board needs to have some material removed to give the board a nice clean surface on all four sides. And that's why these boards are referred to as S4S. So this is a one by six S4S sand surface on four sides. I feel like that may have been a little more confusing. I hope not. I hope, I hope you found that information useful. Um, now, one more thing I thought I'd add is how a board is described. And it's generally the thickness, then the width, and then the length. So if you needed to buy a board that was a one by six by 10, you would be buying a board that's one inches. Well, we actually know that it's three quarters of an inch by six, and we know that that's five and a half by 10, and that's the length. So it's generally the thickness, the width, and the length. And also the length is generally true. So even though a one by six is actually three quarters by five and a half, the length is generally going to be what it says it is. So if it's 10, it's gonna be 10, or it may even be a little bit heavy, maybe 10 feet and one inch. The shelves will be held in place with adjustable shelf pins. Well, I've got all the shelves in the bookcase, and I made sure I was able to get the shelves in the bookcase from the front of the cabinet because I won't be able to get at the back of the cabinet once the bookcase is installed. And also, uh, I thought I'd mention that I didn't make a video on how to build the bookcase, but I did make a video on how to build the lower cabinets, and it's really pretty similar. And also, I made a video on how to drill the adjustable shelf holes. So uh, I'll make sure that there's links on the screen if you want to check those out. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.